Hello and welcome to Think Fit Be Fit podcast. My name is Jennifer Schwartz. I'm the hostess and creator of this podcast where we are dedicated to effective thinking for potent exercise. This episode today is an interview with my personal doctor. She's a functional medicine doctor. Her name is Dr. Anka Sisu. She is located in Alexandria, Virginia, where my business is as well, uh, Impact Your Fitness. And she has been part of my network for uh, about a year. And she and I um, started the patient doctor relationship not too long ago. And part of the setting for this episode is me learning about my body and being a elder millennial trying to stay as healthy as possible. My goal might be like yours in that I do not want to age the way my parents did and I want to thrive now and decades from now. So you know, that's what I'm, I'm going through right now. I'm uh, learning this stuff from an educated place, from an experienced place. However, this is a, uh, it's a, it's a fun conversation. We focus a lot on, you know, why functional medicine is a bit different from our conventional medicine and that detailed medical testing for health and illness in any stage of life can be done through functional medicine. We talk about skin as a reflection of the gut health. We talk about leaky gut and muscle growth. We discuss my health goals, my resilience goals. We talk about genetic mutations and various manifestations of that in health. I thought this was a pretty cool, that's at the end. And we also talk about telemedicine and functional medicine. So I learned, um, a lot through using functional medicine in my own personal health care. I outlined the entire thing in an episode. It's over 40 minutes long. Please check that out. It is on the show notes and uh, linked on the show notes. But, you know, as you may have noticed, being healthy really drives my motivation. What keeps me coming back to this podcast with so much passion is knowing that we deserve more than what the fitness or most physical therapy businesses like really offer us in terms of injury care, fitness care, and self-leading with fitness. It, we're, you know, I know, and I, I know that you're tired of this, but most of us are really tired of bland information from the fitness industry. Well, guess what? Dr. Google is also very terrible in this way. They, you know, us being, you know, kind of controlled in the media and through data with through pharmaceutical companies and through big pharma has really changed the way conventional medicine works and that's why functional medicine is something I bring up with pretty much all of my clients in Alexandria, Virginia and just like my business, you know, this podcast isn't for people who desire a status quo. We want a healthy lifestyle. We want an optimal lifestyle and we want to ask the good questions of how to get there. Well, functional medicine is where it's at. They give you space to learn about you, learn about your history, your unique body, your your questions around your health and that there's so many environmental factors involved. There's so many emotional factors involved and I'm such an advocate for this type of medicine. So That's why we're here today, and I really hope you enjoy this episode with Dr. Anka Sisu. She is in Alexandria, Virginia. You can see her and all of her accreditations at restorebalance.net, and you can reach her there um, and request a consultation or a virtual appointment, or if you're in Alexandria, a in-person clinic appointment. Before we head into this interview, please go check out thinkfitbefitpodcast.com where you will find our brand new website and join our mailing list that has all kinds of cool guides and videos on how to get deeper with your exercise, how to connect better, and how to be a thinker 
and an independent thinker about your fitness and your body. This is so aligned with that, you guys. I really hope you enjoy this episode. If you'd like, you can meet with me on Instagram at impact underscore your underscore fitness on Instagram and think fit be fit underscore podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Enjoy. Potent exercise comes from a healthy body. And that means in my definition um, of health, which we are definitely going to dive into, um, the full body health, you know, um, not going by the measurements and the standards of the standard American diet or the standard American acceptable levels of health. Um, And that guest is Dr. Anka Sisu. She's a functional medicine, uh, a a functional MD. So you're a functional medical doctor, correct? Correct. Yes. Can you please tell us the rest of your, um, your professional like affiliations and accreditations and stuff? Sure. Um, Hi, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I'm so pleased to be uh, with you today. And uh, so I'm a regular medical doctor. I went through conventional uh, family medicine practice uh, training, but I've been always passionate about integrative holistic medicine. So um, I got trained in uh, acupuncture, osteopathy, and then I pursued the training through Institute of Functional Medicine because um, I wanted to help more people than I was able to with the conventional medicine uh, skills that I had. So uh, I take a whole body approach to people's health and uh, with an important emphasis on nutrition, gut health, balancing hormones. Um, In general, my goal is to bring people back in balance uh, using this holistic approach and find the root cause of their medical issues. And once we find that and we reverse it, people start feeling so much better and they don't need a doctor as much. Mm. So uh, your practice is called Restore Balance, correct? Yes. Okay. So balance is a common, it's one of your missions probably. It It is. It is my mission to balance both the physical, emotional, and spiritual body uh, because uh, people uh, get sick when they're out of balance. So Mm -hmm. that's that's kind of my goal and mission. And uh, I do osteopathic medicine, which balances a lot the physical body, acupuncture balances more the emotional body, and then the nutrition and functional medicine kind of balances the whole person. Mm, Nice. I, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just excited to, uh, have you on my team as a, um, you know, as a person who loves, loves their health and loves their body. Um, So this is, you know, this is just so exciting. (laughs) Um, And one of the the things I really wanted to get started with, um, because I think this question will show the difference between what we know as like an internal medicine practitioner uh, versus a functional MD. So, um, and these are these are questions that I've been asking myself. Um, I've been on a very spiritual junkie path um, uh, as of the last year. So there's a lot of journaling and a lot of meditation, and um, and um, one of the hobbies I picked up in quarantine has been astrology. Okay, so I just love it. Um, so um, one of the prompts I thought of is, you know, what for me, like, what does it mean to be thriving? You know, what does it mean in the in the physical sense, like our physical health? What does that, you know, um, how do we experience a thriving and resilient body health? and energy. And so when I asked myself that question, um, I, I simply said, you know, feeling security within and inspiring others to do the same, that 
you know, I'm consciously making positive and productive choices towards alchemizing the, the spiritual um, feelings and pain, but also like, in, in like making conscious, uh, consciously making positive and productive choices for my body. What is your perception of thriving and resiliency? in the body? That's a great question. Um, I see a lot of people who come in because they are feeling tired or they are just not feeling at their best. Um, And it's uh, like detective work for me to discover why that is, what's the missing piece there. And so, you know, for some people, it is not having enough energy in the morning to get up and uh, do the things they're supposed to do for other people is um, not having the endurance to to exercise or to finish their day. They might be uh, feeling great in the morning, but then kind of sluggish in the afternoon. For other people is more of um, not having the the drive or uh, feeling depressed uh, or just not, just feeling blah. Um, So with with those components, I look at, digestion and absorption of different nutrients because this is essential to rebuild your cells in your body and to manufacture energy. Um, And the gut is kind of the fundamental uh, part of the body because this is how, um, you know, the different nutrients get get absorbed, different hormones are manufactured, and also um, the inflammation can sometimes reside or start in the gut. And so if you're just inflamed, you might feel achy. And and when you're feeling achy, you're not able to exercise as much. Um, Or if you're not absorbing certain nutrients, you might not be making the hormones that are optimal for your health. And um, and so digging a, a deeper look at the gut through functional medicine lenses um, gives me some clues into what's happening with all those components. And then I talk to people a lot about their sleep. Um, Got to sleep, you know, seven to eight hours a night of restful sleep, uh, which a lot of people don't do or don't have time for sleep. Um, And then, you know, it's about... um, doing your exercises, you know, on a daily basis, mm-hmm. uh, having some purpose in your life, living with joy, finding the some passions that you have and connecting with those things. And uh, it, all these things are, are could be missing pieces and we don't have time to do everything, but we have to find time to do the things that balance our body. Mm. You hit on some cu- a couple really interesting points here that I think will um, highlight why functional medicine is so special. And essentially, um, it's almost like an anti-capitalist model of medicine, in my opinion. Like, But, you know, stop me if I ever, like, make these jumps, because, like, I'm a philosopher in my head. Like, I just want to connect all these big ideas. And so... You know, I'm, I'm happy to back off sometimes. Um, but one of those things is um, you said some of the people that come and see you are feeling just blah, lack of energy. Um, and I know that, like, your continuum of patients goes, you know, further down, like, the sick line of probably cancer, um, IBS, uh, you know, all the high inflammatory diseases, right? But you said feeling blah, lack of energy, don't have the energy to finish the day, right? Most people think that's normal, right? That's what they think, but it is not normal. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So um, do you take, so at that point, do you use testing to reveal that it's not normal or do you take a very like proactive educational approach to that? Good question. I like to test because um, I like uh, data and uh, you know, if you don't test, you don't know exactly what's going on. So um, with functional medicine, we have access to more detailed 
uh, thorough testing. I was mentioning the gut assessment. It, um, I use a comprehensive uh, stool test, which looks at how you're breaking down your foods, uh, the gut microbiome, balance or imbalance. Um, if you have certain infections, if you have a lot of inflammation, if you have a leaky gut. So by just doing this test, we have a bunch of information that's very actionable. And based on it, I make recommendations to my patients to, uh, you know, treat the condition they have. Um, you know, I, I've had patients who didn't want to be tested. So we, uh, we took more of a broad approach in the, you know, that can work, but again, it can take longer and it's not as specific. Um, you know, in today's busy society, uh, people want to get better yesterday. So in order to do that, uh, I think testing is, uh, is very important to give us the data. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. You can get information about inflammation from a stool test. Yes. Is that what you said? Okay. So that's my next, like you said, inflammation starts in the gut. Um, did I write that down correctly? It can start in the gut. Yes. Yeah. So, um, there, there is a number of, um, imbalances that can create inflammation, um, in the gut and then throughout the body. And, um, you know, we can detect that with a stool test. We can detect that with blood work and, uh, you know, take the corrective steps uh, mm -hmm. to manage that. And, you know, a lot of people have joint pains, for example, um, or achiness uh, in, in the muscles and in the body. And then um, for that, I sometimes do a food sensitivity testing, which reveals a number of foods that uh, people are sensitive to and oftentimes starts with a uh, disrupted gut. My per like one of my goals, one of my resiliency goals is optimizing protein synthesis because I love working out and I believe like th not that I just love working out. Like I think bone health, brain health and muscular health. Oh gosh, I could go down the whole list. Um, all have a very strong and intimate relationship with building muscle, you know? And so if we talk about the building muscle process um, and the gut, like what, do you, what would you look for? Not maybe what would you look for? Yeah. Where would you go with that as far as like testing or the um, looking at the stool results? So there is a, marker for the leaky gut that um, I look at with this uh, stool test. And, you know, if the gut lining is disrupted, that tells me that people don't absorb the nutrients very well or certain um, proteins that should not be, um, you know, absorbed like bigger molecules pass through and they create um, a reaction to the body. So, you know, that is one of the tests. So the integrity of the gut lining is important for absorption um, of the different nutrients, including proteins. And, um, you know, there is uh, the gut microbiome. If that is dis disturbed or disrupted, uh, there are certain vitamins that uh, take place uh, in a healthy microbiome. So I oftentimes see deficiencies of uh, B and K vitamins if uh, the microbiome is imbalanced. And, you know, um, the metabolism is like a perfect orchestra there. And if you have certain missing uh, pieces, you know, it's, it's kind of the building block Blocks that uh, are missing from the for, uh, from the production of your hormones from the building of the muscles, and so you know. Interestingly enough, um, there's a protein, an amino acid, actually glutamine, that I use quite a bit to repair the gut lining, mm -hmm. and that is also used uh, for you know building muscle uh, endurance, and and so this is an important amino acid to help uh, heal a leaky gut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like muscle building and gut lining are go hand in hand. Yes. Um, and like when I first heard a leaky gut, I just assumed it was like leaky in like a consistency, uh, like that the, the word leaky was very, was describing like the consistency of stool. Um, I hadn't realized that it was the, Mm, permeability of the actual lining, um, which is 
it seems like this, so that is where we absorb nutrients. It sounds exactly, like. exactly. Okay. So the gut lining is just one line of cells that should be very tightly connected. And so when you lose that uh, connection, um, the, the, that is what they call a leaky gut. So it's a disturbance in the barrier, in the junctions that are supposed to keep everything tight inside of the gut lumen. But in turn, it it opens up and allows kind of uh, different things to come in. And, you know, people with autoimmune diseases experience this quite a bit, a leaky gut. Mm. Yeah, that was my next, that's where I was going next. So if I uh, picture, I love metaphors and analogies. Um, So if I picture this like tree and uh, at the, the base of the tree is like, are like a le- like a leaky gut. What are the branches going to end up being like how many inflammatory or how many chronic illnesses would could start with leaky gut? That's a great question. Uh it's a number of them. You know, I have people who have um joint pains, people who have um autoimmune conditions, headaches, skin issues. Um and, uh, you know, the list can uh, go on and on. It's, uh, it's kind of the starting point of a lot of chronic conditions. Jeez. So if you could educate people on leaky gut, which I think you should give it a different name. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's also known as increased permeability of the gut okay. lining. And, you know, the process can some, sometimes start with overuse of antibiotics Um or, you know, eating the foods that have been sprayed with a number of pesticides that actually open up those junctions in the gut, you know, a lot of the inflammatory processed foods, sometimes people get um, an infection, a bacterial or a parasitic infection, which is the starting point of this leaky gut. And the body does an amazing job to to try to heal it up to some point. But there is uh, an ongoing number of insults that uh, continue to happen. So for example, you took an antibiotic for seven days, then you started eating your standard American diet, which inflames the gut lining even more and more. Then you might just get in, um, you know, eat a raw hamburger that has a parasite in it. And, you know, that also affects the gut lining. Um, You eat too much sugar, and that's just adding to the insult. So it's, uh, it's an ongoing uh, process, like a vicious cycle that we have to stop. Mm. Yeah. So in my practice, I uh, call that the allostatic load. Yes. You know, because people come to me for chronic injuries, you know, um, what, and usually they're pretty active. So on uh, the surface level, you know, they look healthy. They, right. they quote unquote, look healthy. Um, they are moving. Uh, they are moving every day, but there's something that, is there's a load that they're carrying around that is holding them back. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I don't, I didn't make that term up, right? You know that the allostatic load is a a way to describe how I would say how flexible your system is at getting to homeostasis, like getting to your most uh, like efficient way. So in exercise, an exercise is an excursion away from homeostasis, right? Like exercise is a purposeful activity to go away from homeostasis, your, I guess, your baseline and challenge your muscle, challenge your nervous system and your immune system and your, all the systems to retreat back to homeostasis. And so if there's a high load, an allostatic load, and I'm not explaining this to you, I think you understand this, but um, (laughs) uh, for the listeners, just an insight to my practice, when you get, when you go in into that excursion and you can't return and your body doesn't recover, uh, that is a problem. And that's the context that I talk to people about it, but uh, like this goes into uh, basically the day-to-day stress of our modern society that our body hasn't 
completely evolved to or has poorly <laughs> adapted to. Um, shoot. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Yeah. So uh, in today's society where everybody is stressed, what I find that is that people's hormones are out of balance and they're um, thinking about um, the cortisol. Uh, people are a lot in fight or flight response. And during that state, the body cannot really repair. So then when you start um, adding exercise to a very stressed body, that sometimes can make you even more stressed. And so you're getting into vicious cycles of, oh, I'm exercising, I'm doing the best I can, I'm eating a decent diet, but still I cannot lose weight and I'm more and more stressed. So, um, you know, this is this is the what you're saying, that allostatic load, the total body load of, you know, toxins, inflammation, that, um, you know, you're thinking you're doing a great job with, you know, exercising and eating decent. However, the body is, um, you know, it has a, a load of uh, either toxins or stressors or this leaky gut picture that we're talking about. And instead of easily recovering back to baseline, it stays in a chronic state of uh, fight or flight. Mm. So that is... Um, that is another type of intervention that, um, you know, people can take and, you know, working on stress and, uh, uh, you know, things like meditation or um, slowing down actually on their exercise, doing more yoga versus, you know, high intensity exercises just to get mm -hmm. their body to unwind a little bit uh, will, will allow them then to restart their exercise routines and to be able to lose weight. But we really have to balance the nervous system during those situations. Yeah. I mean, I've moved into suggesting people just get out and work out in the outdoors and in, yes. in nature. And the more that I learn about how the all just being outside, um, doing healthy activities, not like the standard American diet barbecue version. Um, and just that alone is just like such a chemical and like hormonal rebound for your body. It's just like, I mean, for like our modern problems, right? Like, right. like this, this flight or flight thing, like it just, oh, then I don't know. Um, this is a, this is kind of a new discovery for me as a gym rat. You know, before I ask my next question, I'm going to say, listeners, just a reminder that we do have a disclaimer on the show. This is not medical advice, but um, I'm going to start asking some more specific questions, um, mostly pertaining to me. So um, the well, back to the gym rat idea. I so currently we're in, um, you know, what month is it from when uh COVID had start, you know, started, uh, four. <laughs> changing our, changing our whole society. Um, I don't know, four months, five mm -hmm. months. Okay. So, um, I tried to go back to the gym and the meaning like the weight machines, the squat rack and all that stuff. And I, I missed it. So I go back, I only go back three times. And while it was very like, clean, that, uh, secure, you know, I felt safe there in one way. There was a whole nother layer of this stuff that like made me feel really uncomfortable, uh, which was kind of like the, the energy exchange of just being there and like having to be hyper vigilant about who's around me. Um, that's number one. Number two, I'm really concerned about these chemicals, uh, getting absorbed into my skin, um, which, and looking at the panel of blood that you just ordered and that we're looking at the thyroid, it, it, am I justified in feeling, uh, worried about chemicals harming my body? Um, maybe even specifically the thyroid? Yes. So, uh, Definitely, the uh, the thyroid is one of the organs that is affected by toxicity around us. And so, you know, certain people are more sensitive than others to chemicals. And I'm thinking more of people who 
um, have some difficulty detoxifying from uh, from those chemicals. But in general, we live in kind of a toxic soup around us where, um, you know, from the air we breathe, from the food we're eating, the water, uh, we are uh, facing chemicals on a daily basis that our body has to get rid of. And so, you know, I think in, in this situation that you're describing, knowledge is power, knowing what kind of chemicals do you use to disinfect the machines, you know, do you allow enough time for those things to off gas so I'm not you know breathing in um, all these chemicals kind of timing your exercise routine so if they do the heavy cleaning in the morning then you know don't go in there right after um, and you know you're bringing up an interesting idea which I was thinking about is you know if you you're supposed to relax when you exercise yes. if you're in <laughs> you know hyper vigilant in this high alert situation the body is just going to get more and more stressed. So, yeah. you know, I think it's important for us to get the information, you know, what kind of cleaners do you use? Do I feel comfortable going in there? And so, you know, create that space that feels comfortable. If, if that's not necessarily at the gym, then do it at home. But the purpose of it is to allow your nervous system to relax as you're, you know, doing your exercise and feeling, um, you know, feeling good about what you're doing. You do, n don't live in fear because fear is yeah. just going to bring on more stress. Yeah. I mean, the optimal state to work out in is the flow state. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of a challenge, not too much, not too much risk, right? Like right. The challenge of novel stimulus, mm -hmm. but not too much novelty, right? Right. So that's why, you know, again, nature is like the perfect solution. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I've been talking myself into like having an outdoor gym at this point. Um, but I, I just can't, there's no other, there's no other solution, you know, and um, right. that's the, that equates to achieving the flow state. And um, so I think, for me, oh God, I've just been so vigilant about um, my skin and toxicity for a while. You know, my my first eye opening experience. Okay, so let me back up. That so based on that, I'm not going back to the gym right now. Okay. Um, I bought a few extra pieces of equipment. This is I'm so spoiled though to be honest. Um, I have a gym in my building that is completely acceptable. Um, and I also have my own studio with Pilates equipment. Awesome. <laughs> and I have a patio out at my apartment that I, I use the kettlebell, like, and I'll go do a kettlebell. And then there's a place down the street that has, uh, these strength classes that I'm going to do once a week. And it's like, you just stay at your station mm -hmm. and you still get like some group camaraderie. Cause like, as you can tell, as you know, you know me, like I'm very, very extroverted. So like I, I gotta have some kind of interactions. So that's the new plan going forward. And I'm sorry if I triggered anybody, uh, I am totally spoiled in this. Like, I, I don't know. I've, I've been very, I'm very grateful and fortunate that my life is not, completely been thrown upside down by this, um, pandemic and, uh, all these society changing, uh, you know, um, trips that we're all on right now, like going in circles and whatnot. So that's that. Um, so my skin story is, um, when I first engaged with the functional medicine doctor, uh, one of his first prescriptions to me was a topical magnesium. And this topical magnesium had such an impact on my, my sleep that I could tell right away. There's very few supplements that you can say, oh, I know this helped me right away. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've, that's the feedback and just general collective that I can gather. So, ugh. so once that started, once I like, was plugged into, oh my gosh, I'm putting this on my skin and it's impacting half of my day, basically <laughs> every single day and my brain health and my anxiety. I changed my whole entire perspective on the skin. 
And uh, I also have done, the listeners are, are used to me telling the story at this, they might be. I've done a couple cadaver dissections. And for me, that is like, it was like spiritual. Like I, I am, I, I, I'm forever indebted to those, th- those specimens because it was, it is so incredible to see inside the human body. Um, and going through the skin and seeing the different types of fat and seeing, um, you could almost see the toxic load in the skin, dude. Like I, I was blown away that I could, you could see what fat looks like. And, um, so there was that, but then like just seeing like how thin it, it actually is. And it is a barrier of course. And we, we just assume it's like this, like, in, like really strong barrier. It's just amazing. Um, so like those two perspectives jumbled into um, this part of my brain that's like never going to let go of that has totally, yeah, a, a long story short, uh, my perspective on skin and skincare and what, and the the barrier of toxicity. Um, so uh am I am I too vigilant? Am I am I losing it a little bit? Should I have a little bit more confidence in um my body here? Um or should am I am I properly aware, you know? So is um I think the the question uh could be asked in different ways. So from my perspective, the skin is um, our biggest barrier, but also our biggest organ of detoxification. So uh, from that perspective, I find that the skin is a good reflection of your gut health because um, part of um, gut health is this process of removing toxins from the body. And you can do it through, you know, um, stool, through urine, but also through sweating through the skin. And what you're uh, bringing up the point that the the fat that is uh, placed underneath the skin um, has an important role um, to hold on to toxins or to free up some toxins that, um, you know, oftentimes when we're exposed to pesticides, um, they end up in uh, depositing in our fat. So, you know, for people who have a lot of, uh, you know, skin issues um, such as acne or rosacea, I uh, do a gut you know, do some thorough gut testing and we find a lot of imbalances in there ranging from inability to detox to certain infections to there's a condition called uh, SIBO or small intestinal bowel overgrowth that manifests with a lot of gas and bloating. And that's actually um, an imbalance in the gut bacteria. And that oftentimes manifests with also with skin issues. So, um, you know, and then there is the perspective of what do we put on our skin? If we, mm-hmm. if we put chemicals that, uh, you know, create, increase the total body load of toxins, then in the long run, we're doing more harm than good because then the body has a harder, harder time removing those toxins. So, you know, my approach has been to take a step back to say, how do I unburden the body from all this uh, toxic load? And so, you know, making sure that we're digesting and absorbing our foods, that we have plenty of fiber in our diet and eat, you know, clean and organic as much as possible. So being mindful of, you know, certain foods that are more sprayed with chemicals than others, there is, um, a list called um, Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 uh, that people can look at to determine which foods do you absolutely have to have um, organic in your diet. And then, you know, uh, Environmental Working Group puts out lists of um, also different creams and the household, uh, you know, cleaners that are uh less loaded with those chemicals and pesticides because at the end of the day, it is the total body load that drives this toxicity. And if you have certain genetic mutations um, that that don't allow you to detoxify properly, you're just holding on to those toxins and they just manifest in different areas of your body, including the brain. You know, sometimes Mm -hmm. people have 
you know, brain fog or just the fatigue they cannot break. And so, you know, um, it kind of comes full circle if you're looking at the whole person. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh God, I could go in so many directions right now. Um, <laughs> my brain is buzzing. Um, and okay. So when we talk about, what was that one thing you just said? Well, I'm curious about, um, <laughs> your skincare and, um, it, it, do you take that from like a gut approach? Because you guys might not be able to see her. We're taking some video, but I have no idea how old you are by looking at you. Like your skin is just beautiful. Um, and, um, and, and you know, that might be genetic, a uh, big component there. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Um, so I'd love to know a little bit more about your, uh, self-care routine, if you're comfortable with that. And, um, then you said some genetic, um, groundwork that people might have that might make them less able to detoxify. So I know those are like two probably big questions, but those are just the things that popped up in my mind. So okay, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to answer that. So, um, you know, I realized how important a diet is, especially for my body, because, um, you know, I cannot afford to eat bad a uh, few days in a row. Otherwise, I'll be having issues, you know, with my skin, with my joints. And so, you know, I basically took this functional uh, medicine approach on, on myself. And, you know, when I first moved to United States from Romania, I was having a lot of uh, fatigue and skin issues. And, uh, you know, going to conventional doctors, I wasn't able to get any answers. And so um, I was working with a naturopathic doctor at that time, um, who kind of started me on this path of, uh, you know, doing a stool test, finding out the imbalances in, in my digestive tract. I realized that gluten was a big issue for me. So uh, when I removed gluten from my diet, my skin cleared up, my joints felt so mm. much better. And so, you know, I realized I had a number of food sensitivities and interestingly enough, other foods that I really loved, such as tomatoes and cheese, were also triggers for both my skin and my joints and my fatigue. So I learned to, um, you know, live without those foods and I only have them occasionally and sometimes I pay the price. But, um, you know, I also learned uh, the, uh, what I was just talking about this um, the detoxification issues that can start from um, some genes. So we, um, we have a pool of genes that come from our mother and father. And so when they combine, they can create um, some genetic variations. And so um, if, uh, if they don't combine properly, then you can have some genetic glitches. And so, you know, I learned that I had uh, one of those mutations called MTHFR. Oh, bless so, your heart. That's a, that's a hard one. <laughs> it is a big word. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, what that does is does not allow me to properly detoxify. So then I have to be extra careful to eat clean to, um, you know, not to put too many toxins in my body and to take certain sort supplements that, um, you know, balance those uh, genetics. So this is my kind of uh, uh, long answer to your question. I think, you know, the skin is also um, a, a very good reflection of, um, you know, the gut, but also, you know, how, um, how you're sleeping, you know, how, how relaxed you are, and you know, what, uh, what nutrients might be missing from from your body. And so, you know, I think, um, I, the, the skin that my complexion is, uh, is kind of how I was born with, but I was also, um, you know, adding all these layers to, um, for general health, I wasn't necessarily targeting my skin, but as a side effect, my skin looks pretty decent. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> um, cause like, yeah, that's, um, it seems like it would be a good indicator for us. Cause it's got like the whole, um, you know, like the survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. like aspect to it, like that should be like a huge alarm system that something is wrong inside. Right. Um, just from that, like, it's a basic human sign of, you know, quote unquote fitness, right? Like, right. um, you know, it's going to make people more attractive. Um, anyways, so 
That's cool. What um, is, um, I've heard uh, histamine used as a, uh, as a component of a, like a genetic marker that might make someone more like overreactive or um, their inflammation load a bit higher. Is that true? Or did I just like make that up? <laughs> well, some people are more sensitive to um, to certain foods that raise their level of, of histamine. But, um, you know, we find oftentimes that uh, if we look at the gut, there are some disruptions in the gut that kind of feed that pathway. So um, in this balancing process, um, you know, certain genes don't manifest if you don't have the right environment for them to manifest. And so this is kind of my goal working with patients is to create the, uh, the right uh, garden in their, um, in their in, you know, digestive tract, because you know, when you disrupt this ecosystem uh, that is you know, your, your gut flora, then uh, you start manifesting, um, you know, different genetic imbalances. Um, and so, you know, when you have more inflammation in the body, you manifest those uh, genes. So um, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, concept to say, okay, you can take a number of people who have the same genetic mutations and to see that actually the manifestations in their life can be so different depending on their lifestyle and their choices. Mm. Yeah. I almost want to rebrand functional medicine as like, we start with the gut, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just that that's, that's what I keep hearing, which is uh, it's so cool. Um, so to wrap this up, I've got two questions. Do you have any exciting, like continuing education that you're doing in the next two years um, or something that you're working on that um, is exciting to you, like on a professional or maybe, you know, personal or spiritual. And then the other thing is I want, I would love to know if, are, do you take patients solely virtual as well now? And like, how much has your practice changed um, since COVID? Okay. So um, my goal for the next uh, number of months is to, um, to be able to provide more of a more unified approach to, you know, different health issues. And so, you know, combining different modalities in my practice, um, such as, you know, the acupuncture and osteopathy, uh, they per as they pertain to musculoskeletal conditions, but also to the gut health. So, you know, creating some programs that offer different modalities to to treat uh, certain conditions, because what I find is that if we only work on the physical level, we might not get as far as uh, if we're addressing all the components, you know, having people work on their stress level, which they can do by themselves, but it's more powerful to do it with the guidance of uh, either a counselor or um you know, I, I work with people more like a health coach where I keep them accountable every month to be sure that they are making the changes that we're discussing because, you know, things get in the way. So, so then, you know, my goal is to see, uh, people progressing much faster through their health journey. And, um, it is a partnership. It's, uh, you know, uh, the commitment that I make to them to hold them accountable, but also for them to make the changes. And when they are stuck to reach back to me or to the nutritionist I work with, um, to get them, um, unstuck. And, you know, it's not just this team. I, um, you know, I know, of, uh, the physical therapists that work, uh, both on a physical and emotional level that are, I'll be partnering with um, actually in the space I'm, I'm at right now. Um, it's also a physical uh, therapy office and they are fantastic. Um, so it's more of this, of this team approach that, uh, that I'm working on for, for this next year. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of um, your second question was about um, pivoting to more online. I actually enjoy quite a bit doing, um, you know, telemedicine consults because I talk to people in their home and they can show me, you know, their supplements and oh my God, they can yeah. show me their fridge. And so I can see what they're eating and, you know, how, um, how they're 
home looks like or their workspace because oftentimes you know I ask them about you know posture and uh, their ergonomics at at their home office nowadays and so that's making things um, easier and you know it's saving time both for me and them and so um, I find that you know doing functional medicine uh, is is a uh, pretty easy to do online you know people still see me for the manual therapies and um, you know for the first time appointment uh, sometimes not always but um, you know I was able to pivot quite easily to the um, you know telemedicine and I'm planning to you know continue doing this because um, you know we're we're gonna need flexibility (laughs) for you know to work remotely I think in the next number of months Mm -hmm. yeah um, what did, do you think we missed anything that we should have brought up to like, you know, um, help those, help the topics that we covered, uh, you know, be more uh, understandable or relatable? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I think in the big scheme of things, um, people need to feel empowered that if they feel like they are, something is off in their bodies, um, they need to bring it up to a physician who has a different set of skills, um, who can, you know, listen to them and work with them to dig deeper into what are their health issues. Because, you know, sometimes it can be just a uh, a question of I'm not feeling well, but I'm not quite sure what's going on. So it is the the job of a physician to figure that out together with them, and uh, to sometimes involve a team to help them out. And so, you know, I would like you know people who listen to really feel empowered to say, okay, I'm going to try to do my best, balancing my life, you know, eating well, exercising, sleeping well. But if I'm not feeling good, I'm not just going to wait until these issues are so significant that I can barely get out of bed or I can barely function. I need to be mm-hmm. proactive and preventative uh, with my health because, you know, it's it's the best thing we have. If you don't have your health, then, you know, you cannot uh, work well. You cannot be there for others. You cannot be there for your family. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I got a pretty intense physical manifestation of that when I was 20 years old, you know, I, my mother died of Lou Gehrig's disease and, you know, there, (laughs) there's nothing more physically terrifying, you know, um, except I did see, I, I do, I actually, I can top that. (laughs) <laughs> but it was, you know, it's like man-made, you know, it's like the the radium experiments of, you know, the 40s, like where people were being sold to like rinse their mouth with radium to look hot. And like then they ended up with like, you know, their teeth falling out. And but again, um, you know, that physical manifestation of losing your freedom, losing your life um, doesn't always happen to us in a way that we can learn from it and go upstream, right? Like that's the profound mission that I've put myself on is to be upstream with my health and make it um, an asset for my life. And yeah, I don't, I, I, so as many times as I have to say that to get that into people's head, I will do it <laughs> um, because, you know, I just want to like mirror what you just said. Like, you know, that's retweet, retweet, retweet. Like that was great. Um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I just thank you so much for uh, participating in this and being so open and um also for, you know, being available to me as a, uh, me- you know, on my team and as a provider. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to diving deeper into my own chemical makeup, you know, disruptions and makeup and maybe even celebrate some some resiliency, right? And uh, yeah, because like, the resiliency factor came up for me when I w- had to have to take this stool test. And I was like, oh my God, I have to go off my digestive enzymes. And like, you know, for like a half a day, you could like, I was convinced like that was going to be, you know, like I was going to fall apart. 
but I've been off of it almost a week and I have not fallen apart. So that's just like wonderful. Um, <laughs> it's trusting um, your body that it's going to know what to do, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's like, like that's for me, um, has as someone who has gone through, um, I would even say a little bit of an eating disorder related to healthy eating. Like I can overdo it, um, in a way like, and, and, and that has more to do with, um, perception than actually being ill, like mentally ill or whatever, whatever category of illness eating disorders are in, um, excuse my ignorance. Um, and, uh, like, yeah, so I, I don't know. So that I'm learning about resiliency in the most graceful way I can, even though like, you know, I'm a very aggressive and, you know, and I just want to like attack it. So do you have any uh, closing advice for me there? <laughs> yeah, I think I uh, admire the fact that you didn't stop at the point of, oh, I actually look good. And, uh, you know, you realize there, there are some things that um, might be off in my body. And even if uh, the previous blood work looked normal when it was, um, you know, done by your regular doctor, you did not stop there. You you continue to see, okay, there is something that I need to figure out. And so I'm just going to find the right person to help me out. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I invite your, your listeners to do the same. Functional medicine doctors have this kind of broader training. And so Institute of Functional Medicine is the place, ifm.org, to find a practitioner near you to partner with and, you know, find the holistic practice that is going to be there to um, help you balance your health. Um, and so, you know, I'd, um, I'm taking patients um, in my office, um, mostly from Virginia, but, um, you know, people can see me through telemedicine or in person. Um, and um, I'm grateful to be of mm -hmm. service. Yeah. Yeah. I felt really comfortable during our telemedicine visit, um, just for what it's worth for the people out there, because I've had mixed you know, feelings with it as like a, you know, muscular skeletal care, like care provider for people. Um, and some people were like, no way, like, am I doing that? But like s the people that were, have been willing to do this, um, telemedicine type of visit have, um, really benefit from it. And like, I personally, uh, thought ours was very effective and I felt totally comfortable. Um, even more comfortable than I'd say in a, in an actual office setting. So okay. yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. We were, that was, um, a great episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had fun. <laughs> Good. All right. Wow. That was a really fun conversation. I've really gotten to get to know her and feel truly grateful to have someone like her in my corner checking my blood work. So thank you for hanging out with us this long. I would love it if you could join the conversation. Uh, you can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, thinkfitbefit underscore podcast. You can tag thinkfitbefit with your ex extraordinary story and how you can, how you are embodying Think Fit Be Fit. Or if you have a topic or question, you can bring it up there um, and direct message us. Please subscribe to the newsletter on thinkfitbefitpodcast.com. Dive deeper with us. That's why you want to sign up. We offer a unique view on muscles, portals to new ways to respect the body and health, and, you know, self-leading with fitness. We think learning and enjoying the process are buzzy terms. We take this stuff seriously and want to take you, our listeners, on the journey with us and through us. We also have a course called Movement Pathways. This is for people who want to learn how to manage the body, your body, their body, and exercise with precision. So this is for people with old injuries that haven't gotten over the hump. You can check that out at movementpathways.com. You can also hang out with me on Instagram at impact underscore 
your underscore fitness on Instagram, on Twitter at Jen Impact. And you can check out what else? I think that's it. (laughs) Thank you so much, you guys. I am so glad to help you reach that really optimal level of fitness and ask really good questions of your body on this journey. Have a wonderful week and thank you so much.